boom so here we go as soon as you get a phone that is not switching on by any cause as soon as you open the motherboard here is the motherboard that we will be working on so if you are using an analog meta for here i'm using an analog meta but if you are using a digital meta then you are going to set yeah, a multi meta to boost mode you understand so but for here all the multi metas will have the the, the boost mode which is named here it is name boost you understand so if you are using an analog meta you are just going to set it to boost mode right here so when you set it to boost mode i think you all know that when you send it to set it to boost mode you are going to have this sound right here let me just try and explain what this mode is this mode is used to test open circuit with oh if something is a conductor if something is a cable without any open circuit you understand so that is why when you join it like this it beeps which means it's a complete circuit there is no open circuit right here so when you test something like a cable that is open that is that have curved in the middle then you won't get this sound you understand what i'm trying to say right so if you are using a digital meter just set your multimeter to boost mode and if you are using an analog meter just set your multimeter to boost mode so as soon as you have done that you are just going to hold on your motherboard then work on it to see what is causing the problem the type of problem that is in the mo is in the motherboard so if the phone is water damaged you are going to test if you are going to clean the motherboard and test it if there is anything shorting in the motherboard so let me just go right here into the motherboard then let's start testing so that i will show you how to test what to do and how you can go from here to there to know the problem so actually this motherboard it's okay but i just want to show you the steps that you can do in a mobile pcb that is not okay you understand so i'm just going to show you the steps on how you are going to test the components how you are going to test how you are going to read your multi multimeter to know that they, this is the problem and this is the ic that is causing this problem in in the motherboard you understand so here is the motherboard and here is my multimeter probes as you can see the multimeter is still in boost mode so what you will need to do is that you are going to place the positive of the multimeter on earth you know what earth is right earth is any gnd gnd surface in the model when you take your positive probe of your multimeter and set it to gnd on the motherboard then use the gnd probe to test all these components from there you will easily know you will easily know the component that is shorting so you are going to start with the battery connector if the phone is not switching on so you are going to test the gnz which is supposed to be beeping connector then you are going to the positive side of the battery connector this one does not supposed to beep you understand this one does not supposed to beep so if it beeps that means there is a full shorting in the power section of the motherboard and sometimes when you test and it's not beeping like here it's not beeping and the phone still does not switch on then you from there you will need to go on and test the other components in different places because a capacitor can really be shorting like in the network section like this power capacitor in the network section here if it's shorting then it won't short the the battery connector right here so when you test and everything is okay around the battery connector or around the power ic you supposed to come to the other side which is the network section and test if it's shorting there because if it's shorting it wouldn't be possible that it can short the battery connector so you are just going to come test all the capacitors around the phone around the component in the phone test all the capacitors that are available or the diodes so as soon as you have checked and everything is okay as soon as you have checked and everything is okay you don't see any short on the motherboard then what you will need to do is that you just have to connect your battery just connect your battery to the motherboard then try switching on the phone because there sometimes some like sometimes the power ic can be shorting but it won't short any component around it you understand what i'm trying to say right so as soon as you have used your multimeter to test and you see that no component is shorting on the motherboard then try connect your battery then press the power button and use your 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 hand use your hands to to feel the component that is hitting or use the spray the the short detect spray to to see the component that is that is hitting on the motherboard so when the reason why you are you have to connect your battery and press the power button is because 
if the chip that is shorting is in the other side of the motherboard that only gets voltage when you switch on the phone then the, the chip won't hold except you press the power button then start sending voltage to the chip with then then the chip can start getting hot you understand what i'm trying to say right so when you check and there is no chip so if you completely test everything in the motherboard and you try connecting the battery pressing the power button and there is no chip that is hitting on the motherboard then what you will need to do is that you are going to check how shorting which is some kind of problem that only few people know only few technicians know how to check you will need to check how shorting how shorting does not actually beep in a multimeter but you will need to check the value that is that a multimeter is displaying so if i'm going to show you how to read that in an analog meter then it will confuse you because analog meter is kind of complicated to read and it will be complicated for me to to show you how you can do that but when you are checking how shorting using your digital meter when you set your red probe multimeter to the gnd and then the black probe to the positive connector of the battery terminal if you are using a digital meter and you get a value between 250 to 0 ohms that means there is half shorting on the pcb and you will need to use your short killer or any short killer device that you have to fight to heat up or completely kill the shorting component so if you are using an analog meter analog meter usually beeps half shorting but when it beeps you will see this you see this this uh, arrow right here when it beeps how shorting this arrow won't be right here it will be between 200 ohms it will be between 200 ohms to 10 ohms to 0 ohms yeah if i can say so so it's kind of complicated like i said on a analog meter but i usually use this analog meter to identify how shorting because it's very easy because when you test how shorting the beep, the way that it sounds, is different from how it beeps when it's full shot and you understand what I'm saying, right? So uh, you will need to check if there is half shot in, in the battery connector or check any, all these ICs or any diode around the power section or the next network section to see if there is half shot in. And one thing you will need to take note of, this is the CPU and here, this capacitors right here. This capacitors right here a cpu capacitor with a very low resistance you understand so it might be on your multimeter which does not mean it's it's bad you understand what i'm trying to say right so this is the cpu and here is the cpu capacitors and this is what you will really need to take note of when checking short circuit all most cpu capacitors are always beeping which is because of the low resistance resistors that are being combined in the cpu that are being integrated in the cpu so when you check all these cpu capacitors they will be like they are shortened but yet they are all okay so after you check all that and you see that everything is okay then here is what you will need to do here is the next step that you will need to take to check the stuff so if you check the, the the battery connector and it's not shorting then what you will need to do is that you will need to connect your battery and test the the power button if there is any power on in voltage and it it might be one to three volt you understand so if you see a voltage on the power button and you verify and see that the power button is working as intended then what you will need to do is that you are going to connect the phone and charge so as soon as you connect the phone on charge you are going to test if the charging voltage is on this terminal so if you don't see any charging voltage on this terminal then you just need to go on and change the charging ic the charging ic can easily stop the phone from switching on so if it's, if there is no power if there is no voltage from the charging then you just need to go on and change the the charging ic you understand so i have a video on how to identify all these ic's on this pcb how to identify all ic's on a pcb like this motherboard if, when, if i just hold this motherboard right now I just, i'm just going to tell that this ic is this this one is this and that one is that so if you watch that video on how to identify all mobile ic's you'll be able to identify and know that when these problems happens then this is the cause this ic is the cause so if you check the power button and you don't see any voltage then you are going to go on and change the 
charging you are just going to go on and change the power ic because the voltage from the power on and button is from the power ic you understand what i'm saying right but in some phones the voltage from the power button is from the cpu so that is why you always need to try different things try reading schematics so that you will able to know that this this line from here is going to this ic you understand so i'm still to make a video on how you can hit, read schematic diagram but i have videos on how you can get all mobile schematic diagrams so you can check that on my channel homepage you can scroll through my videos and see that so if you see no voltage in the power button then you are going to change the charging change or revolve the power ic so if you change and revolve the power ic and still yet you don't see any voltage then you should revolve the cpu because maybe sometimes the power voltage might be coming from the cpu and when you change it everything will be working as intended so when you check and there is no component shutting on the pcb and then you check you see the charging voltage in the battery connector then you check the power button and you see the power on in voltage then here is what you will need to do you are going to take your usb cable then with your pc and you are going to connect the phone on your pc pc in flash mode and see if your pc will detect the phone to connect the phone in flash mode some phones you will need to hold the volume up button then connect your usb and in some phones you will need to hold the, the volume down button then connect your usb if you connect your usb while holding the volume up and your pc does not detect the phone then you connect it while, while holding the volume down and still your pc does not detect the phone then you are going to go on and reball or change your cpu the cpu is the main problem that can cause a phone not to be detected by a pc and still you can change your charging ic it depends the type of the charging ic some charging ic some charging ICs only send signal for charging to the CPU and some send the data to the CPU and to the PC. Some phones get detected in a PC through the charging IC and some most phones get detected in the PC from the CPU. That is why I said if your phone does not detect on the PC, you should try change or revolve the charging IC and you should do same to the CPU mm. so for this one the EMMC does not have anything to do with a phone that does not detect on a PC because even if you remove your EMMC which is your RAM of your phone the phone will still detect on the PC so if you check and it, and it detects if you connect and the phone detects on your PC that means it might be because of a corrupt software it might be because of the corrupt software which you will need to download the phone firmware from the official website and try flashing the phone so during the flashing if the phone succeed with the flashing if the phone flashing process complete then still your phone might switch on and still it can sometimes it will not switch on so if the flashing completes which means that the ram is totally okay then you are going to reball ICs like the power IC. The power IC might not be sending some particular voltage to the other side of the motherboard, or you might have to change or reball the CPU. So if you flash and it fails, that means that the RAM, which is the EMMC, needs reprogramming, or you will need to replace the RAM with a new one. I hope my explanations are clear and make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so that you will get notified anytime that I upload a new video.